Um, hi, my name is Carrie Ann Philbin. I'm a secondary school ICT teacher. Um, I work at a school in East London called Robert Clack School. And this year I became a Google certified teacher. Um, I'm also an advocate for women in computing and I run a project out, which was born out of my experience at the Google Teacher Academy called Geek Girl Diaries, in which I'm trying to encourage um, girls to um, take up IT. My website that we'll be looking at today is called ICT with Miss P, so if you do have access to a laptop or um, a Wi-Fi device, you might want to have a look at that so you can see in real time what I'm talking about. So today I want to talk about student e-portfolios using Google Apps for education and what I have done at my school to enable every Key Stage 3 student to have an e-portfolio within my subject, which is ICT. So why e-portfolios, first of all? Well, my subject is a computer-based subject, and at my school and I think Ofsted generally like to prove that marking is taking place. And with ICT, it's really difficult to prove that marking is taking place. And in ICT, there's a lot of verbal feedback as well. So I wanted all my students to have uh, an exercise book, but I wanted them to have a kind of online exercise book. So I decided that ePortfolios was definitely the route to go. And I also think it's really important that we teach young people that it's okay to have a presence on the internet. It's okay to have your name come up in a Google search, as long as it is showing positive things about you. So I have 900 students in Key Stage 3. I'm responsible for the Key Stage 3 curriculum at my school. Um, and I wanted to demonstrate attainment through the work um, that was produced. I wanted to demonstrate we could mark. And I really wanted to reward some of the work that was taking place um, in our classrooms. So the biggest challenge I had deciding on e-portfolios was what I was going to do. Was I going to go down the route that a lot of people had done before and use a blogging kind of site? Or was I going to use um, you know, more of a website-based idea, something like Google Sites? And I went back and forwards between this. I even had debates with other Google certified teachers. I just couldn't decide between the two. And what it came down to in the end is this, control. Right? How many times could you tell a kid to go off, um, sign up for Blogger, uh, do all your work on there, that's going to be your e-portfolio. But hey, I've got no control over that. They could go on there, they could say some terrible things about the school. Next thing I know, I'm in trouble with my headmaster because I've got no control over that. But Google Apps for Education, one of the best things it gives you is control. All of my students can have an e-portfolio, and I can keep that completely within my domain, and I can control that. So 900 kids, I know that they're not do it, getting up to something they shouldn't be getting up to. So I went with sites. But even now, sometimes I think, oh, I wish they kind of had a blogging element. But I'll come back to that. So using Google Apps for Education, um, what I did, I set up Google Apps for Education within my school, and I'm sure that there are some people wearing some fantastic Google shirts standing around who will explain to you, if you don't know what Google Apps is, um, what it is and how you can get that into your school. It's a free service, and it's one of the best things I ever did at my school. And what I did within that is, um, for every user, I first of all created a template. So I took Google Sites, I created a template of what I wanted my ePortfolios to look like, and then I added it to my domain as a template. So when students logged on, they created a site. They could just select that template. So they've selected the Robert Clack ePortfolio template that they then went on to edit. And they could add pages to it. They can add their work to it. And, they, and it's then kept within the domain. So what you would need if you wanted to do this in your school is you would need Google Apps for Education set up. Um, I set mine up with the domain Robert Clack Apps. And then I populated it with all the users at my school. Like I said, I've got 900 kids at Key Stage 3. Every single one of those is a user on my system. I administrate that system as a secondary school teacher. And I'm not doing loads of extra work. It's just that easy to administrate. I don't need to run it through my technical support department. I can do it myself. Um, I set up my site as a template. And there are some little things you need to do to be able to set that up as a template. And if I just quickly show you what they look like. So this is my site live at the moment, ICT of Miss P. This is where my student go to access their work. And I've got a link on there that says ePortfolios. And I've put my classes on there. So here's my sets. All our sets are named after um, famous people in IT. So we've got Berners, Sugar, Brickling, Kilby. If we have a look at, let's have a look at someone in Sugar. My students. Uh, let's have a look at Armit. 
you wouldn't be able to click on that link and it would show you this page. This only works for me because I'm logged into the Robert Clack apps. It wouldn't work for you. And it will only work for my students and people at my school. Right, so this is how I've got that control over what they're doing. Here you can see the template that I created. It's got my school logo. I created this template. And then what students did is they went in and they added information about themselves, what set they were in, um, a little bit about what they enjoy doing. Um, this student thinks he's a computer genius. And another thing that I introduced was badges. So to encourage them to add their work to their pages, so I've, um, see, these are some of the units that they've been doing, like eSafety. To encourage them to add their work so that I am able to mark it, um, I introduced badges. So once they've added all of their work and I've marked it, um, I can then, they kind of unlock a badge and they can put their badge on their ePortfolio. So what it's done for me is it's sped up marking because they've attached all their work to their ePortfolio. So instead of me going through their directories looking for the work to mark it, it's all on here for me to find. If it's not on there, they don't get a badge. So of course it makes them want to put their work on there. Um, I think I can probably show some of the work as well. Um, this is a poster that they did when they first joined in year seven. Um, here you can see his uh, work. I wonder if you, yeah. And here you can see where I've marked it. And the really cool thing about Google Apps for Education, they've used this to create um, a poster. I gave him some feedback and said, well, to improve it, you need to add some numbers and maybe you could do this. He went back, added the numbers, improved it, and then put his feedback on there. Look, I have done this, miss. And it's become a two-way conversation, so my marking is now you know, a conversation between two people. And it's, I can prove it. And if um, I have an inspector in my classroom, I can say, here's my marking. This is what we've been doing. There's a record of it. So just to go back to the badges, this student, um, he likes to attach all of his work. He really likes to unlock badges. And I think at the bottom of his ePortfolio, yeah, he's got some badges that he's added on there. So if I go back to my presentation. So for me, the benefits I find is that they take pride in their work. It's like an exercise book. It's like an exercise book for history or geography or you know, art. They take pride in it, and they want to display their work on it, and they want to get badges, and they want to show other people. Um, they go home and show their parents. So it's the first time that ICT work has been shown outside of school to their parents. This is what we're doing in class. So at parents' evening, I can talk to parents about what their son and daughter has been doing. It's been quicker to mark work. For me, it's just so quick. I can use the comment boxes, not just on the pieces of work, but actually on the ePortfolio as well. Um, the feedback is relevant. It's a two-way process. It's a conversation. And um, they're able to collect badges. And these are some of the badges that I created um, for my students. So if they attach all their work correctly, then they will get a badge. So these are some of the ones that I've done. And what I do is I just share them as images. So if they've got all of their work on their ePortfolio and they've met all their assessment criteria, I just share the badge with them and then they just put it on as an image on their site. It's really straightforward. So um, what I've done to actually all the steps that you need to be able to create um, a template for students to use as an ePortfolio, um, I've created a video. And the video is on my channel on YouTube, ICT with Miss P. Um, I did it as a session online um, for the on-air conference. So if you just um, go to ICT with Miss P, you can find a link to the YouTube channel, or just go to YouTube and look for the channel ICT with Miss P. There's a video that will explain all the steps that you need to be able to set up uh, your own templates that students can use as ePortfolios. So if, you want, uh, if there are any questions, or if you want to talk about this, or if you've got any more ideas, then I'm more than welcome to speak to you after. That would be cool. Right, it's nice to speak to you all. Thank you.